Hello, and welcome to Lecture 4 of Electric Interactions in Phys 1204. In this lecture, we're going to start getting quantitative as we learn Coulomb's Law, which is the law that lets us calculate electric forces between point charges. We'll be talking about forces that objects exert on each other, but throughout this lecture we'll be only talking about forces that point charges exert on each other. In Phys 1104 we met the idea of a point particle, in which all of its mass is concentrated at a single point in space, and so it has no volume. A point charge is just a point particle which is also carrying some quantity of charge, and that charge, just like the mass, is also all concentrated at a single point in space. This may seem like a ridiculous idealization, but in fact, experimentally, as far as we can tell, electrons are point charges. And while protons aren't really point charges, for all practical purposes, unless you're doing calculations to do with their interactions at very high energies like in a super collider, you can treat them as point charges. Contrast this with a charge which is spread out, which we call a charge distribution. So if any quantity of charge is spread out over some area or volume, such as over the surface of a real object, that's what we call a charge distribution. From our observations in the previous lectures, we already know a fair bit about the properties of the electric forces that charges exert on each other, and this will let us figure out what the force law should depend on. We know that an object with a larger charge will exert larger electrical forces on other charges. And also Newton's third law tells us that if it's exerting larger forces, then the forces on it must also be bigger. And so the magnitude of the force must increase with the amount of charge on both the agent and the target of the force. So we know that if we're talking about a force that, say, charge 1 is exerting on charge 2, that must depend on both Q1 and Q2, which are the quantities of charge on each. Although you should be uncomfortable, because we haven't talked about how we measure charge. In particular, we haven't even mentioned what units we use for talking about charge. We'll get to that. We also know that the magnitude of an electrical force has to decrease with the distance between charges. So we know that the magnitude of force has to increase with both the charge on the agent and the target, but how does it increase? What sort of function of those charges is it? Well, this can be figured out experimentally, although this is a rather difficult experiment to do. But schematically, you would have some target charge and some other charge that you're using to exert a force on the target charge. And ideally, that source or that agent charge would be, say, a conducting sphere. If you now bring an identical conducting sphere in and touch it to your agent, then we know that the charge will distribute evenly across the two of them. And so now each of them will have a charge Q over 2, if Q was the original charge of the agent. Now if you take away the second sphere, you can measure the new force on the target. And if you actually do this experiment, you find that it's half of what it was before. You can do the same sort of thing, varying the charge on the target. And in the end, you find that the magnitude of the force has to be proportional to each of Q1 and Q2. Now let's return to the original situation, and instead of looking at how the force depends on the amount of charge, we'll look at how it depends on the distance. Again, it's a difficult experiment to do, but it has been done. If you double the distance between the charges, you find that the force decreases by a factor of 4. And so this tells you that the electrical force is proportional to 1 over the square of the distance between the charges, or we say that this is an inverse square law. I find that many students have difficulty understanding what's meant by an inverse square law, so here's a question for you to test your understanding. So let's go back to our original situation. We have a charge Q, it's a distance R from the charge Q target, 
and it's exerting an electric force on Q target that has a magnitude of F. Now suppose we reduce the distance between Q and Q target to one third of the original. How large is the force that the charge exerts on Q target now? So think about this and make a choice before going on to the next part of this video lecture.